Hello, Stuart Sharp here. I'm going to be reading an extract from chapter 51 from my autobiography, The Gift. It's called The Good Samaritan and based in the early 1980s when I was in my mid thirties. At this point, I had already studied music and learnt to play classical guitar. Just one thing stood between myself and the Philharmonia Orchestra. One, I had no accommodation. And two, my vision was at the top of the Empire State's building, but the reality was in the basement. This is a chapter about a larger than life character called Anthony Wade. Many years later, Anthony became Dr. Voice and one of the greatest vocal coaches on the planet, who coached Sam Smith, one of our biggest singing stars, and many other great singers. And I'm proud to call him my friend. Then it was back with heart-wrenching reality to my spot by the bridge in Wood Lane, London. I stared inanely at the BBC television centre and screamed, one day you will play my music to the world. The pavement not only provided a harsh, hard and dirty contrast to my aspirations, but it was also my bed for the night. Then I saw him out of the corner of my eye. His burly frame, business-like gait and happy-go-lucky attitude made me smile. And he stopped suddenly. Hello, what are you writing? he asked. I was always happy to chat, but there was something special about this larger-than-life character. His tone was different, his interest genuine, and he already felt like a friend. Anthony Wade gave me an hour of his precious time. I have no idea why I told him my story, even though I risked losing his attention. It just seemed right. Let Anthony tell you in his own words what happened next. I first met Stuart Sharp when he was living rough in Shepherd's Bush. He told me an incredible story involving music he had composed. He wanted to record it with the world's greatest orchestras. Initially I thought he was quite mad, but as a musician I was intrigued and wanted to know more. He had a very rough demo music tape and handed it to me, and I listened to it that night and within the first few minutes I knew I was listening to unique music possibilities. Something told me I had to get involved and I invited him to stay with me at my house. I wanted to learn much more about his life and dream. I worked with him to flesh out his music on the piano, but I realised that to do his music justice, it would need to be recorded by the world's best orchestras. After a six week stay with me, he left, and I wished him the best of luck. Fifteen years later, he tracked me down with an astounding proposition. He had somehow made enough money to hire myself and an arranger, a world-class studio, a conductor and the London Philharmonia Orchestra. Five years later we were recording his Angelis series with the world's greatest orchestras just as his dream had foretold. I found it all totally surreal and quite astounding. because I've seen you all for the last uh, 10 years of my dreams so I'm about to be checking that's going to be really real and I really would like to thank you all very much and I'm very humbled to be here in front of you wonderful musicians it's a dream come true for me and I really thank you and I'm most grateful for all the work you've done to make this happen for me thank you very much for being here
It's going very well. Yeah, the orchestra sounded great, and it's uh, just a question of getting it all knitted together. It's not, it's not an easy piece to put together straight away, so it needs rehearsal. And it sounded, sounded very good, though, for the players. Phenomenal. Just waiting for the finale now. Get the final boost to the skies.